Recorded somebody on the system, but it's going to be one of the time. So, uh, what the body does at its, as its peak function at this period is what is called detoxification. And um, um, it's simply like an African way of life. In Africa, when we wake up, we first want to clean out, you know, sweep the floors, mop everywhere, clean everything out. Um, if you grow up in an African room like my mom, she can sweep. She can sweep the same space for 10 times. In Western world, that is called a disorder. Um, <laughs> but for her, it's not a disorder. She just believes that everyone must be clean and tidy. I understand, you know, uh, <laughs> it can be a compulsive one for some people where they always do that. Right. And so, um, between the hours of 4 a.m. and 12 noon, the body is carrying out this, uh, this uh, function. So it's exiting from the system, eliminating from the body waste products. These waste products could be results of um, 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 metabolic activities within the body. It could also be a result of the uh, replace, replacement or the repair of damaged or dead tissues. So when we wake up in the morning, the body also wants to empty all of these things and throw them off the system. Uh, that is why we say that for anyone who is not an ideal body would have bio movement at least once in a day, once in 24 hours, because of this particular function. And now when this function is not carried out, it means that the body is not exiting toxins as it should. So detoxification is not going on. And when that is not happening, what you have is that the toxins begin to 
um, accumulate within that process system. This accumulation gives rise to several disease conditions. So I can say that over and over again until you know we all understand and get it that if your body is not exiting waste products as it should, it's a serious problem that you need to pay attention to. Right. And there are several ways of that elimination. The bio movement is one of the most effective that the body must do at least once in 24 hours. And so the next circle or the next phase, sorry, is assimilation. This starts by 12, it runs through 8 p.m. In this assimilation phase, the body is converting nutrients, is breaking them down into bioavailable forms that the body can utilize to carry out its other functions. And so it's from this point that distribution takes place. The nutrients are extracted from the food molecules and then they are spread across to all the parts of the body where they are required or needed. And the last phase is rejuvenation. So at this point, between 8 p.m. to 4 a.m., the body is at its peak to repair, to replace uh, damaged, sickly, or dead tissues, cells in the body. This is what the body does between 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. And in the wisdom of you know, the intelligence of the body, this is a sleep phase where the body should be sleeping and should be at rest. And so a whole lot of repairs will be going on at this stage in an ideal condition. So I've had people who say, I work at night and then I, I can't sleep at night. My advice is always that there are certain jobs that you cannot do for, for the whole of your life. There are certain jobs that you should just do while, while in the making. And after you are done, you're already made, you need to exit them. Because on the long run, it's really going to have an, 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 I mean, a negative impact on your life, on how you live. If you remember people, um, I don't want to say some people will not understand, but truly really some people will not understand that. Um, for people who understand who saw typewriters in the days of typewriters, um, you see the way they type, they slap it back, they pull it back, you know, in those days, typists were the kings, they were the queens, because we have more women who were typists. And they were, if you enter to an office, the way the typists will even look at you, the typists were more important than your guy in the main office you were going to see in those days. We would know that today, that you don't even need a typewriter. I can't remember seeing any typewriter in any office. Now you have your keyboards, you have your keypads, you have your mouse, you have some of you have other peripheral devices with which you can communicate with your system, and you don't even need to type your letters with TPEX and all of that anymore. But the point I was trying to make is that for people who had stayed in that industry, who had remained typists for a long time, a whole lot of them would have arthritis in their fingers. Most of them end up in their later years to have arthritis, especially in their fingers. They, it is terrible pain they go through. That's like an hazard, you know, peculiar to that profession. But that is still mild as compared to some people in some professions with some terrible side effects. Uh, people who, were, who worked in construction industries, even in North America, I've met a few of them who had some terrible, I mean, I, I met a man who had leukemia because he was working in construction, in roofing, at a time when there was little regulation as regards exposures to asbestos, you know. And there are so many people like that that, you know, in their later years, they begin to fight and have and such case. I had the case of a lady who works as, um, um, am I forgetting people who work in the X-ray department right now? What am I doing with their name now? So, you know, that's what she does. Really anyway. so they are always there. You are taking the scans of people, taking them. That is not a job for anyone to do for 10, 15 years. You cannot escape the radiation for that long period of time. The accumulation is still coming back to fight you later on in your life. 
and they say they have the wear protective gears and stuff like that. There is nothing you can wear that we, I mean, for people, the, the protective wear is actually meant for people who are coming to use that like in 10 seconds, in 20 seconds, and they are out of it. So whatever you are wearing cannot protect you. So those are not jobs that you can do for a long time. And then you are working jobs that keep you up at night, to work at night. Your circadian clock is not wired to be awake at night. It's wired and programmed for you to sleep at night because of this important function that is going on in your body. So some people do not have enough sleep. When you do not have enough sleep, you're having deficits. I think I've explained that in this class once. And I said, imagine, no, this is not an imagination, is what we know that 50 billion cells die off in the human body every day. 50 billion new cells are reproduced to replace the, dead, the dying of the dead cells. The irony of it is that it will take like eight hours, like from this 8 p.m. to 4 a.m., or let's say from 12 p.m. to 6 a.m., or 12 p.m. to, I mean, 12 a.m. to, or 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning to kind of allow the body to finish the process of replacing 50 billion cells. If you want to do the mathematics, you will be like, so in an hour, it's about 8 billion cells that are being, you know, replaced by the body. So if you sleep for three hours, your body would only have been able to replace three times 8 billion cells, which would mean your body would be able to replace 24 billion cells out of 50 billion cells. So it means that your body was only able to replace half instead of replacing 50, it's only replaced 24 billion. So when you wake up and you go up and do some other stuff you are doing, your body is carrying over a deficit of 24 billion cells. Now don't confuse the number of cells to weight size, or to the weight of a body. Somebody can be somebody can be very slim and have the regular number of cells that the body requires, and somebody can be obese or overweight and not have it required number of cells. So it doesn't work with the, non, the, the weight as it were. So the point I'm trying to make is that you go on with that deficit day in, day out. It means that some vital organs and some vital tissues in the body are not having the required organs to carry out, the required cells to carry out their functions. So that alone could start off a disease process in any human. And so you'll find people that sometimes doctors are giving them everything they can give them, all the treatments they know, yet these people are not doing well. Now, some of them have been placed on bed rest. Some people, they just go to the hospital, Nigerian doctors do that a lot. For no reason, they just tell them, okay, we will admit you. They begin to pass water into them. It's not the water that they really don't want to pass that is really going to do any job. It's just that they just want them to sleep and they want to, they want to arrest them and keep them locked down so that they can at least sleep and remain in the hospital for a while to rest. Because so many people are walking around with uh, deficiencies, uh, with deficits in terms of the rejuvenation process. So the body is not having enough sleep, so that's gonna affect so many things. So that is why we advocate that at least six hours sleep minimum, eight hours sleep, between six to eight hours sleep, I don't wanna say eight hours maximum, but again, if you are sleeping beyond eight hours and you are above the age of 12, that is something to worry about. <laughs> I'm not saying, yeah, I mean, it may not be any serious thing, but you should pay attention to it as well. Eight hours should be max. Um, you know, there's nothing you are probably sleeping for nine hours or 10 hours. The world is passing by. So you should just sleep for more than eight hours. But some people don't even get six hours, and that is dangerous. So, that is just a simply recap. So we call this circle the DAR circle. So because this thing is put in repeat. So after the 4 a.m. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good day. Um, how has it been? How, how has it been today with the challenge, with the task for today? The I'm, I'm having my own right here. For someone like me, it's like it's like second nature, right? <laughs> but I will I'll be lying to you to tell you that I always feel like taking this every day. <clears throat> There are days I also wake up and I don't I don't even feel like it at all. I don't even feel like anything smoothie. 
there are days there are days I wake up I feel like I feel like I have a craving for yeah. <laughs> I remember when when we were in college I had this team of young ladies that we used to have a, a program for ladies all of our while we were in college and there's there are two of them um, if you ask them have you eaten today they will say no for them the definition of food is something that is peppery that has oil so if it, is, <laughs> if it doesn't have oil and it's not peppery it's not food and they do this a whole lot so there are days i also wake up and then what i what i feel like um doing for that day is to just have something that is cooked that is peppery that has oil and all st stuff like that you know so i'm only saying this to uh to let us know that it's not always easy right uh but if you know the reason you are actually doing something you really want to do it all the time you're not really waiting for anything to motivate you the reason for doing it is enough in motivation and that is what we'll be talking about today because uh it was dr miles moro who said where the purpose of a thing is not known abuse becomes inevitable and i agree um when people don't know why they do what they are doing it's going to be very easy for them to be discouraged i've even had people that doctors had advised not to do a few things but because they never told them why why are you telling me not to do this uh most likely they give up and then when they give up it could become something they may never be able to recover from right so let me ask us today what was the experience how many people i saw a few i saw a few videos um, sorry pictures that were sent to the whatsapp group and those were very commendable um mrs amy miss amy yes sir okay so I, I love that picture that green i, I love greens generally and that was Thanks. a very perfect that was a good picture what do you have in in your mix again oh uh, in my mix i have uh, kale i also have avocado i have green apple and i had ginger in it and banana okay you are ginger you are kale that's yes, good sir. yeah kale that's good you could do kale you could do spinach you could do uh cilantro you could do celery celery would give you that all right uh sometimes yes, along this program i'm going to be talking about the greens and the reds <laughs> and why um so this is this is tending towards uh, the red right um there is something about that as well and then there is something so important to you about the greens so if your smoothie is green or is red i will always advise that you should stick to either of these two colors when you are doing your smoothie so uh, let it turn towards green or turn towards red you can be sure that you are having a lot of antioxidants and um, you know uh, doing a whole lot of stuff within your system if you go for either of the two uh, that again is a big subject we treat during the Nutraceutical-led college why we talk about the colors of the rainbow and how it affects, our, I mean how it um, explains what nutrient you can actually get in a particular food. So it's a code, so we call it the ABC code, A for architecture. I used that architecture method yesterday while talking about avocado and the womb. Uh, some other things that uh, architecture would explain is the correlation between the celery and the skeletal system of the human body. Another one would be carrot. When you cut carrot across and you look at the eyes, the eye, you take it out, if you look at the transverse section, how it is spread out, it has so many similarities with the carrot. Another one would be the citrus family, oranges and the breast, right? The connection, the layers as they are laid, the fiber of the orange or any of the citrus family and the breast, they have certain similarities. 
all of these shows that whatever plant, whatever fruit, whatever food or vegetable that you find that probably has a similarity with any part of the human body. The human body that they have a similar structure with, a similar architecture with, derives a benefit from that particular uh, fruit, food, plant or vegetable. And so there are also sciences to back that up. For example, in the case of carrot, carrots uh, in carrot is uh, beta carotene, which is a precursor for vitamin A, which the eye requires for clear sight. All right. So there are several like that. Then the B is the Bible code, uh, because we also find out that when you look into the scriptures, there are a few, uh, there are lots of food, plant, vegetables that were itemized and talked about. So their functions, we look at what they did in those days. We could also still relate with them that that will still be their function even up to now. And they, it's proven to be true. The third one is the C, which is a color code. And the color code talks about the various colors of the plant, food, vegetables, or fruits. And when you check the colors, certain colors have been identified with certain nutrients. And so when you see a particular color, you can tell what nutrient is available in that particular food or fruit. Now, so one, I haven't seen anybody talk about watermelon at all. Um, so when people look at watermelon, watermelon has about three, four colors from the back of the watermelon, which is green. Right after the back is white. And then you have the pink, and then you have the seed, which is brown. So that's about four colors. In the case of watermelon, we advise that don't juice watermelon or mix watermelon with anything. Watermelon should be eaten and taken alone. Um, so don't mix it at all with anything. If at all you want to mix it with something, maybe you can use the seeds. Uh, you can include, you don't even need the seeds anyway, because inside the seed of the watermelon itself is omega-3, uh, which is what we're looking for uh, by saying you add some other seeds into your smoothie. Uh, you get that from watermelon. And so when you do that, your watermelon from the back to the front has a whole lot. That's about four colors. It means it has about four nutrients. And much more than that but from the color alone we can identify four nutrients that can be beneficial so we have a saying that if you cannot eat watermelon alone leave it alone if you can't eat it alone leave it alone and when we say eat it alone we mean don't mix it up with anything just take watermelon and watermelon alone and you start um uh, from the back <laughs> to the seed and someone asking me uh, how do you eat watermelon with the back? That's simple. You have to blend it. You have to juice it. When you get a watermelon, run it properly under a tap, running water. After running it under water, cut it into small chops, small into pieces, uh, so as to not burden the blades of your blender or your smoothie maker. And after that is done, you know, put it in your blender, store it on everything is going to be juiced together. You actually can use uh, watermelon. You can drink that for like six hours in your in your smoothie cup. It's going to be there. Make sure it is chilled, cold enough so as to preserve it. It can be there. You can be sipping it. Don't gulp. You can sip it and take it over for like um, six hours. Uh, it's going to cleanse and empty your barrels. I've recommended this for so many people, especially for men who have um, issues with uh, uh, sexual functions. It helps also. It cleanses the colon as well. Um, I mean, it helps libido in men. A lot of men are using that. I've recommended it a lot to so many, to some people, and it has really worked for them. Right. So watermelon will do that. So we say it it don't. If you cannot eat it alone, don't eat it at all. So I'm not saying again that you can't eat it the normal way you used to eat it, like 
you take out the seeds and all of that and <laughs> you just take the pink some people love just the pink color alone the red pink color but there is a lot to it than just the the red pink color that people that is sweet and people are attracted to okay let me take one more experience today from somebody who did just um uh, food uh who did fruits and veggies alone today anybody who is volunteering to say something let's hear your experience i'm saying makide olufisayo i'm not sure whether that's a male or a female if you are there can you just remove your unmute your microphone and talk to us Okay, I'm here. Good okay. evening, sir. Yeah, good evening, madam. Did you have? Hello, can you hear me? Right, I can hear you. Did you have your smoothie? You had your fruits and veggies today. Yes. Okay. How was it? What did you have? Yeah. So. Okay, I. Yes, I did. I did. So I, I really, I didn't. I had um, tomatoes, garden eggs, cucumber, and um, okay. And how was it? What was the experience like for you? Did you feel hungry at some point? Hello. I think there's a problem with that network. Okay. Another person. There's something I'm looking out for. <laughs> Mrs. Funyemi, how are you, man? Can you unmute your mic and talk to us? Hello. Hello, madam. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are yes, you? Sir. I'm very well, thank you, sir. Awesome. Yes, sir. Yeah, how was it? Yeah, it was okay. I had for breakfast, I had cabbage and carrot smoothie. Okay. That's what I had. Then for lunch, I had just mixed vegetables. Okay. Can you and tell I us had, what you are what did you mix in your veggies? Oh. My mix veg, I had carrots, I had peas, I had red peppers, bell peppers, red, okay. I had green, yellow, okay. and then I had beans, runner beans, runner peas, yeah. Okay. So that was it. I didn't put any anything else. That was okay for me. All right. So then for dinner, I had salad. I had, it was almost repeat, but not, okay, I had lettuce, I had rockets, okay. I had carrots, sweet corn, I had beetroot. And yeah, I think that was it actually. You already had dinner. Some of us are still with breakfast. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, it's almost time to eat. I know. I know. I know. I know. Okay, that's good. All right, that's 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 fantastic. That that's okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, cabbage and carrot. Um. Yeah, Mrs. is uh, Martin there and you the night work right now. Yeah, that's a good recipe for certain conditions, especially if you take them on an empty stomach uh, in the morning. Uh, it's to be taken for a period of time. You can't run that consistently over a long time. So that's like a prescription medicine, a prescription smoothie. Right. Um, it targets, there's a target for that. There's a reason for pushing that out, uh, which is good. Um, the other one, uh, the mixed veg in the afternoon. You can also add to your uh, salad. You can put uh, raisins on it. There are people who don't like broccoli because they feel like it's something. But if you had your, if you have your broccoli with raisins, raisins as your sweetener. Sometimes without even a salad dressing, raisins on your vegetable salad goes a long way. Right, it helps a lot. I'm going to play. A video that I would love us to listen to real quick in two minutes and then I'm coming to talk about the first video we listened to 
Now this video is going to talk about that video as well. Then I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to show us a few things in the thing that we. Okay. What do you see on your screen? Please? Hello, everyone. We'll be talking. Oh, sorry. I need people watching on, um, <clears throat> on other platforms to see this as well. So just allow me to make it what they can also see. Okay. All right. Okay, that's our call this afternoon. Good morning, good evening. We'll be talking. Hello, everyone. We'll be talking about the dust circle this afternoon. Good morning, good evening. Good afternoon to you from from here to you from any part of the world that you are in. And we'll be talking about the dust circle, the DAR circle. This is the stages her body goes through every 24 hours. So we have the detoxification, which is the D, uh, um, takes place between the hours of 4 a.m. and 12 p.m. This is when our body detoxifies, takes, takes out every toxin that has been taken from the previous day and assimilations phase, which is between the hours of 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. And this is assimilation. He absorbs every food, every food that has been digested. He absorbs all those nutrients to every part of the body that is needed. And we have the rejuvenation phase, which is between the hours of 8 wow. p.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning. This is when her body rejuvenates, her body replenishes. You, you have new cells taking place. You have creation of new cells and all of that taking place in our body. It is important for us to eat to help these stages in our body. And so between the hours of 4 a.m. and 12 p.m., we want to eat food that helps our body to detoxify. That's that you are enhancing something. Just like women use me scope to enhance their beauty, we should always take food that will enhance that face of our body. And during the, the, um, during the assimilation phase, we should take food that will enhance that period. And during the rejuvenation, we should take food that will enhance that period. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, some people couldn't. Um, some people didn't see that uh, video. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but 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 we had the video, right? We wanted us to just hear it, to listen to it. And uh, the listening, the concluding part of it is the uh, most important part of that video. And it talks about the father. Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Good if you really heard it. So, um, because that part, that part is so important that, uh, that you hear the video clearly. Right. Now, um I'm I'm going to quickly say something because as a concluding part of that video, what she mentioned was that you're supposed to feed or eat according to your you, you eat according to this circle. Now we run this circle every day, 24 hours of the day, we run it, uh, all the works and operate. Uh, this circle uh, divided into three phases. Each phase has got in eight hours, and that is how our body functions, right? So we're supposed to feed to assist the function or the peak function of the body for each of the circle, right? Now, we are linking this up to the task we had today. In the morning when we wake up, the f we're in the first phase of this circle. And that phase is what we call detoxification. Um, as explained, it's a phase where the body is exiting from it within itself waste products. 
it becomes imperative that everybody must undergo this process at least once in 24 hours. Once in 24 hours. We we'll call it a transit time between the period food goes into your mouth and the waste product or the byproduct of the food you consume exits your rectum. We we'll call it the transit time. So we say that in a minimum, I mean, um, maximum in 24 hours, your body should exit, I mean, you should have a bowel movement once in 24 hours. We've had people who do not have such. Some people do have bowel movement probably <laughs> once in three days, once in two days. It's a sign of a serious problem. One of the things you would pay attention to in the course of these 21 days is the quality, the quantity, the size, the color of your poop. It's important. Let me say that again. The quality, the quantity, the size, and the color of your stool, your poop. If your poop is such that drops like pellets, like, like stones or pebbles in shape, they're scattered. That is not a good sign of a good gut health. If your stool, some people do sinks down in the, so if you don't use a WC, then that's the problem. You won't know what you are talking about. So if your stool drops into the, it, it, if it sinks, right, if it sinks and goes down into the bottom of the WC, that is also not too good. It shows that there, there is an imbalance in your diet, in what you eat. For some people, their stool is not, they are not well formed. They are not well formed. When we say well formed, well formed, a well formed stool, a well formed poop. I hope nobody is offended. A, a well formed poop. I was talking with the couple last night. The the wife is uh, the wife just conceived, and then she was belching. At some point, she began to throw, and the, and she was like, "Doctor, of, of, you're not offended." Uh, the husband said, Doc, "He's used to it. He's, he's seen a lot of it. Anyway, <laughs> we see a lot. Yeah. So, um, the 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 way where from poop is like banana." Um, let me not use banana right now because there's some banana, there are all kinds of species of banana. So I will use like plantain, not the too big plantain right now. An average sized plantain is what a well formed poop should look like. You see how spherical it is? That is the way it should be. That is well formed. If it is um, dropping like it's watery, it's not well formed, that means something is wrong with that person's diet. You need to pay attention to it. If we get into the bathroom, and you have to, what's the word right now? Um, passing out stool becomes a hard task, you know, for you. You are there, you are making, you are groaning before you can get it out. That is not also a good sign. Some of these things, how many of you remember the, the, the guy in the Black Panther? Um, I've forgotten his name right now, who passed last year for, I think he died of colon cancer. Right. Now, all these that I've mentioned are pointers if something is wrong with someone's colon. The frequency of the stool, the quality of the stool, they could be a strong indication, like an early, an early uh, detection that something could be wrong with that individual. I'm not saying that alone. And I'm not saying that those symptoms represent that condition alone. That could also represent several other conditions. If somebody is not passing out waste product as at when necessary, and if the quality of what is being passed out is also not enough, that, that could be a sign of some other conditions. Yeah, Chadwick Postman, thank you. Hmm, movie gang. 
<laughs> okay. So, what I'm trying to say is that there is a need for us to pay attention to our poop. Um, one of the books I'm trying that it should be released, uh, we should finish work on it and get it out in the market, is the book I titled Body Talks. I've written this like about five years now. Body Talks. And what Body Talks is all about is that it tells you certain signs and uh, signals that the body gives to you that are warnings of certain conditions at the preliminary stage. That if you pay attention to those signs of your body, to what your body is saying to you early enough, you're going to be able to detect early enough and you can start reversing the condition before they get out of hand. Right. So one of the things, one of the areas our body speaks to us that we do not pay attention to is our bowel movement, the things we do in the bathroom. So if you go there and it's so hard that you have to be groaning before you pass out your poop, it means something is definitely wrong with your diet and something is wrong with your gut. And if something is wrong with your gut, it's not a good sign at all. Let me also say this. Um, in our work with autistic children, you know, what modern sciences today have said is that it has no cure, it can only be managed and nothing can be done. I beg to disagree and there are proofs to show that that school of thought is actually incorrect. We've seen a whole lot of changes, we've seen lots of development. And when parents of autistic uh, kids talk to me, they ask me a question. So how do we know when the job is done? I said, you will know when your child is among every other child and it's difficult to tell that that child ever had autism in terms of concentration, in terms of learning. I said, that is when you know the job is done. And I mean, several times we have that done. And how is that possible? And why am I relating that to this subject? Is the fact that most autism cases start with a poor gut health, either by the father or the mother or a combination of both of them. Because the gut health of the child is inherited, at least the first experience for the gut of the baby is what the baby takes or derives from the mother. And once the gut is infected, I won't call it an infection, I would say it's dysfunctional, right? Certain signals begin to reflect in the growth of the brain, in the development of the brain of the child. Now, normally, certain cells are supposed to stop growing as when well, the moment a child is born in the brain, certain brain cells. But when autism is involved, it gets to a point like, okay, they begin to wear off gradually, but at some point between the age of one and three, they stop wearing off. So because they, 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 those cells do not wear off, they hamper the development. Cognitive development will be stored. It could be learning impairment, it could be speech impairment, it could be all sorts could happen because the gut is an auxiliary brain. There is a strong connection between the gut and the human brain. And so what do we do to bring about um, uh, a reversal of that condition? It's also to work on the gut alongside so many, so many other things so that we can use the gut as, as a battery to jumpstart the brain. You know, like when you have your car and the battery in your car is out, you look for another battery that is good enough, you get a jumpstart cable, you connect both to each other, and then you jumpstart it, then it begins to work. That is exactly what we do with autistic children. And we are getting so much results in that, in that area, right? So the point I'm trying to make is that even in your reproductive years, it is important for you to pay attention to your gut health because it has a whole lot to do with the outcome of your baby, uh, of your children, right? So you don't want to mess up your kid's life because of your own um, negligence. Uh, let me put it that way. Right, so how do you now ensure that your body exceeds toxins as at when necessary? One of the areas the body does this is that in the morning when detoxification is taking place, we should consume food 
that will aid or help that process. We should feed on things that will help that process. And one major thing or one major group or style of feeding that will help that process is when we eat uncooked food, food that has not been cooked, food that are in their raw stages. You remember what I explained yesterday about the fact that it is from the soil that we derive the nutrients that our body requires for its sustenance. But we cannot begin to eat sand. We are not snakes, right? So what does nature put in place is that what nature has put in place is that plants uptake the nutrients from the soil, they manufacture this food, they uptake them, store it within themselves in a process called photosynthesis. And so when we feed on these plants, we are able to derive the nutrients. So we all depend one on each other, right? But these nutrients become thermosensitive when they, we uptake them from the so I mean, from the, when, when, when the plants uptake them from the soil. They become pharma-sensitive. I mean, sensitive. Pharma-sensitivity means that they are sensitive to high temperature. They are sensitive to temperature. So some of them, when you place them under high heat, they are denatured. The nutrients in them are gone. So, which is the case most times when we feed and we think we have eaten. Meanwhile, we haven't taken anything really that the body requires. And why is that? Now, your body does not know gari, fufu, pando yam, rice, beans. Your body does not understand all of those. What your body understands are nutrients. When you are hungry, what your body is asking for are nutrients. Your body is not asking you for gari. These nutrients could be found in those food, but if your body is not asking you for the food. I was asking uh, for about our experiences today. I was going to look out for somebody who would tell me, I took the raw food, I took my veggies, or took my smoothie in the morning. Before 12 o'clock, I got so hungry. So I was trying to, I was looking out for that. You know, some people get hungry. I'm not saying that is not possible. But in most cases, because you have given your body the nutrients it requires to perform its basic function, it's not going to be hungry. In fact, sometimes you even forget that you have not even eaten anything. You just go on your smoothie in the morning and then you have the energy to go through your day. Why? In those smoothies, the veggies you've taken are nutrients your body requires. And the moment you have given your body the nutrients, your body is fine. There was a day we were somewhere in South, South Nigeria. And then we had finished speaking to a group of, no, not the, this, this, okay, yeah, pensioners. Yeah, it was this man, old man. No, oh, it was another place. Yeah, but it was in South, South. And then I, I did a lot of travel, travel, quite a lot of travel around Nigeria. I'm talking about this. <laughs> So there was, there was this man who came and said, Ah, I'm an iron bender. That <laughs> ordinary fruit and salad will not do him. He requires, he needs to eat enough <laughs> gari before he goes to do his work. <laughs> and we laughed. And we told him, We'll be here tomorrow. It was a three day program. So we told him, Okay, do what? You know what? Just try it tomorrow. And tell me what time you felt like you had not eaten or had anything. He went and he tried it. He took smoothie. He didn't go to Mama Put to have his breakfast. If you ever see those people eat in the morning, when they are going for those jobs that they do, they, they put a whole lot in their stomach because they believe that that is where their strength or energy is coming from. But what I've also discovered is that your brain consumes much more energy when you're studying than when you are working, when you are doing something physical. Studying, reading, demands, zaps a whole lot of energy from you than when you're exerting uh, some physical strength or physical energy. The guy came back the following day to tell us that. It was surprising. 
they would normally go for his lunch first of all in the morning by 6 37 they have their first meal of the day which is be very heavy so they can have energy and by one o'clock they will have to go for lunch and then another heavy meal which is to help them to continue the work but he said he took his smoothie i automatically recommend um, avocado banana apple which i talked about yesterday right and then use tagano milk to just blend it and that was what he did and then he said it was surprising that he had energy in fact he felt more active he felt more empowered more energized than previous days when he would have consumed those things what was the difference the body needed just nutrients and the food the smoothie he had in the morning was enough the body could take the necessary nutrients it required to get the job done sometimes when we are hungry it is not hunger it's just that the body is signaling to us, telling us that the food you gave me two hours ago, there, were, there was no nutrients there. The nutrients I, need, I needed, they were not there. So now I'm telling you, please give me more food. But we don't understand the message. We just rush into our kitchen. We open our refrigerator. Whatever we feel like our taste buds require, we get it in. And then we, we, go, we keep going. And then we do that for a while until our stomach can't take anything anymore then the body that requires this thing itself is being starved. This is the, this is, is, is one of the reasons why the stage for disease or disease condition is set up in so many individuals unknowingly. And you ask them, are you eating? They tell you they are eating. Malnutrition is no longer a disease of poor people. There are very wealthy people who are raising kids that are malnourished. Kids who do not have the necessary nutrients or those who are just feeding, who have a, a, a diet that is just one way, uh, like somebody would, I mean, I've seen cases of people who have indomie in the morning, indomie in the afternoon, noodles, right? In the afternoon, in the morning, and then noodles also going to bed. It's a case of a, of a young boy who lives somewhere in the southwest of Nigeria. I will not mention the name of the place because of uh, somebody who might be here listening. This young boy, um, was found to be malnourished. They said, told the mom, are you not feeding him? He said, yeah, we feed him. And they asked the young boy, what do you have for look for breakfast? He says, I, I take pap. What do you have for lunch? He says, I use the solid one, the solid pap. Now, the pap in its solid state. I use that one to take uh, fried uh, beans. And then in the night, what do you take? Same pap with moi moi another one <laughs> so all through the day the food this boy eats is just pap in different dimension in different ways some people feed like that and when you do that you are restricting yourself to a mono diet a mono diet can make you malnourished because you are not i mean spreading your tentacles to get nutrients from other food sources and there is no way it's going to be healthy many of us feed that way so in the morning I say that any food that is cooked is dead on arrival. A food that is cooked is dead on arrival. And what do I mean? Because in every food, in their natural state, they have phytochemicals, they have phytonutrients, they have uh, enzymes that will aid digestion in them. But when we cook them, we boil them, we put them under high temperature, all these things are denatured. So it has several effects on the body. I will explain the effects as we go along. So one of the things that we want to do in the morning is to take raw food because the raw food will still contain all of these nutrients. So it's going to help the body to carry out the process of detoxification. That is, the body is trying to clean house. So at that time it's cleaning house, let it not be concerned with digestion because if the food is cooked, digestion will be difficult for the body to do. If the food is raw, because digestive enzymes are still present, it's going to aid digestion. Another example I used to give is when you take salad, like you take cabbage, um, lettuce, raw, and then you eat it. If you go to the bathroom, you might not see any trace. You won't see any trace of the lettuce, the cabbage, I mean cabbage, the vegetables you've just taken. If you take the leafy vegetable and um, or even the cilantro, 
If you take it, you cook it, and then you, you eat it. It's possible that when you get into the bathroom, you will see traces of the leaves of the vegetables in your poop because your body did not digest it. So it was garbage in, garbage out. And why were they not digestible? It was because in the process of eating them, putting them under high temperature, the digestive enzymes that should have aided the body in digesting them had been denatured. So it was impossible. The body couldn't use them. It just passed them out as waste. So that vegetable that was in it was just a waste of time, it was just an exercise of the, of the muscles of the mouth, so to speak. So you want to eat your food raw. If you are looking to maximize your health, as a matter of fact, once you cross a particular age, I normally say by the age of 45, your cooked meals should be reduced to once in a day. Your cooked meals should be reduced to once a day. And the remaining two meals should be raw meals, should be raw food, in order to maximize your health. In order to maximize your health. Your cooked meals should be once a day. And that, that is advisable to be your lunch, not your dinner. And if you are going to eat, have a cooked meal for dinner before going to bed, it's advisable that you take that before 6 p.m. so that your body will still have enough time to process it before you go to lay in bed. Right. All of this might be a bit difficult because of the kind of schedule, the work that we do, and how difficult sometimes it is, especially for those of us who live in cities. But if we are really going to achieve health, we have to be intentional. We have to be intentional. One of the lessons of last year is that when the health of, an, of a people is impacted negatively nobody goes around looking for money and that is a very great lesson that with a simple virus as COVID-19 the entire world can be brought to its knees. if the whole world dies nobody's going to buy the goods that they are producing nobody's going to use the money the banks will be useless so health truly becomes wealth which is the reason we all need to be very intentional about our health. And it starts from our diet to our lifestyle. Not about the insurance card we carry. There are people who have escaped their country of birth, especially for those of us who were born in third world nations. And the moment we get into developed countries, we believe that we have escaped the corruption in a place. Breaking news, you have not escaped anything. If at all, you are just moving from one part of hell to another part. <laughs> that is a sad news. You really want to do more than you were even doing when you were in, in, your, in your country of birth. To pay attention to your health. You know why? In these places, there you have several options several options of health damaging food health damaging practices that if care is not taken your health will just be leaving you right in your presence and you wouldn't know for example for those of us who came in from africa we still have a little bit of hope that sunlight is going to come no matter how it rains in the night that by 6, 6 a.m in the morning there is going to be sunlight we live in places here where sunlight is not guaranteed. You will bear witness to that. And that alone is a major consideration. So when you feel like you have escaped from one place, don't think you have escaped. Because many people, that's what I've seen. They, they think they've escaped and then they lose their guards and they begin to eat and feed anyhow. Oh, there is a system in place. Oh, they have equipment. Oh, they have infrastructure. Oh, there are doctors here. Oh, there is insurance to cover if anything happens. <laughs> you don't want me to share with you the experiences of people. You don't want me to share with you the experiences. You don't want to get to that place before you begin to do the right thing. And the right thing starts from what we are talking about right now. Pay attention to your diet. Pay attention to your meals. Try as much as possible to reduce the number of cooked meals you take which is the whole essence of the task for today. 
feed more on raw food. In the morning, raw food. In the afternoon, you can do your cooked meal. In the evening, do raw food as well. You are, you are allowing your body to rest properly. That is number one. You are giving the organs enough rest to clean themselves out. That is number two. Number three, nutrients, real nutrients are, are made available to your body to carry out all its functions. Some of the functions will include reversing itself of any disease condition. If anything is growing, the body can do that. You know, the stem cell technology, the stem cell technology, for example, if a lady, there is a test, HCG test, the HCG test can be used to detect cancer. It is the same test that is used to detect pregnancy in a woman. Why? When the fetus begins to grow in the womb, these cells are first produced. Now, these same cells don't die in anybody's body. They stay in the human body. Right. So for a pregnant woman, she's going to produce the, those cells in a, in, a, in a very high quantity. So it's going to be detected to show this is pregnancy. Now, these same cells, after a while, if you begin to feed wrongly, if you begin to live wrongly, they are also able, they, the same cells that are able to form, you know, the brain, the muscles, the tissues, the organs of the body of a baby, they still remain there. In fact, one of the things they do is that when, there's, when, when somebody is ill, there's a need for, uh, for repairs to take place, these cells, they are mobilized to go to the site where there is an infection or an impairment and they can fix things up. In the same way, these are the cells that are also culpable in the production, in the growth of cancers in so many cells. And they can turn to be cancerous by dirty eating, dirty feeding, dirty lifestyle. Right? If they are not well fed, they can turn against the person's body. Our body is so complex, it's so intelligent that care needs to be taken. Unfortunately, we buy vehicles, we ask for the manufacturer's manual. We buy TV, we buy our phones, we ask for the manufacturer's manual. But our body that is given to us, most of us don't have the manual on how to run our bodies so that our bodies can serve us on this side of eternity. Right. So all I'm saying this, this evening is this. Your raw food matters a whole lot. You can't be eating cooked meat. Some people will eat cooked meat in the morning, cooked meat in the afternoon, and cooked meat for dinner. Their kitchen is always busy. Those some people will cook like for an entire week, put everything in the refrigerator and freezer, they bring it out the microwave, and they're always eating something cooked. You want to stone that down. If you're already crossing the eight five, you want to close stone it down and focus more on raw food like the one we had today. All right. So on that note is where I'm to our recording for this um, evening. And my expectation is that as we go along these 21 days, somebody is going to change their eating habits. They are going to change the way they eat. And there's a part, there's a, there's a session in these 21 days where I'll be talking about mindful eating. Mindful eating. In these 21 days, I'm talking about that. How do we eat mindfully? Many of us, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are not present in our mind. We are absent-minded when we are eating. We are absent-minded. We just zoom, zoom, and we are done. We are going. Some of us, we eat, we rush our meals. All of that is not helping the stomach. It's not helping the gut. And once our gut is wrong, anything could go wrong. The pancreas could start, I mean, could start misfiring just because of the gut. The colon could go another way entirely because of the gut. Then to lose weight becomes a problem because of our gut health. With these three points of mind, I hope I've been able to convince you and not confuse you. All right. Do I have any question from anyone? Maybe I'll take one because we've already spent an hour. Mrs. EABA, is that a name? Is that your name? You can tell us your name and I'll mute your microphone. Let's take a question real quick. Good evening, sir. Good evening, madam. I'm with you. Please go ahead. Thank you for the, the lecture, sir. So my question is, if one is fasting, for example, 
maybe you are on, on a fast and uh, you want to break your fast how are we going to be able to achieve this diet goal like having the smoothie in the morning then the cooked food in the afternoon and um, probably salad in the night so i explained that your body doesn't need your body doesn't know food your body only knows nutrients even when you're on a fast in fact it is easier to do when you're on a fast um one important thing to do or to keep in mind if you're on a fast is not to be dehydrated never be dehydrated when on a fast your body is not supposed to go for 24 hours without water and so whatever fast you are taking please give yourself the liberty to take water in all of the religions and all of the faiths in all of the faiths fast does not change god fast will only change you your fast is not going to bribe god either to make it today or to make it tomorrow <laughs> so please when you fast take water the order of fasting that has been done they have been done the wrong way one of the biggest churches in nigeria at the beginning of last year they had to send out several notes and warnings advice advisory on how to take a proper fast because many people were doing it the wrong way and they were dying the members were dying that will be sending them look this is what you do this is what you do this is what you do and this is how you break your fast so if you're on a fast this is even easy for you to do so you know that you're on a fast you are only probably going to miss your breakfast you miss breakfast that's probably what you're going to miss i'm right so from the morning period you begin to take water take water i'm talking about the christian fast now i'm beginning to see him this house has so many years in the i'm going to take you <laughs> right even, even for the muslim fast it's even easier for the muslim fast because um you wake up in the morning to have a meal the meal should be heavy the meal should be light. You can see the, the you can see the correctness of that fast. Yeah. So if you are allowed to take water during the day, that perfect is it makes it perfect. You take water during the day, and then you make sure you are taking water. Don't gulp the water. Of course, if you gulp it, it's going to be garbage in and garbage out. That is what it's going to give out to you. So um, four o'clock, five o'clock, you can actually. <laughs> you can like yeah fasting doesn't change god yeah it, it is we that it is, it is man that fasting is going to change okay so um so take water take it intermittently and then after that it's time for you to break your fast oh, already I, I, I hope everybody knows that when you want to break your fast it's not a time for you to now sit down and eat one every meal many people do that they want to compensate for you know the breakfast and the lunch that they missed <laughs> so they carry a mountain of gari in front of them because they want to break their fast a mountain of fufu i know we have some non-nigerian many non-nigerians here but they would know fufu they don't know gari miss <laughs> me you know fufu right <laughs> miss abigail you know fufu okay i'm sure you do so people will carry that yes please uh, okay thank you <laughs> so they carry they carry fufu and then they want to break their fast that is not that is not it so if, as a matter of fact this is what you, you should break your fast with this smoothie is a nice thing to break your fast with it helps your body it helps to cleanse whatever is left and fasting is also medicinal fasting has a whole lot of be health benefit for your body it allows your body to rest and clean out itself. It's one of the things that fasting does. All right. I hope I'm able to answer your question. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right, Mrs. Fadlat. Oh, I thought that was Mrs. Fausa. Mrs. Fadlat, sir, you see you have your hand up. Let's take that one. Yep. Hello, sir. Good right. evening, sir. Good evening, madam. Thank you, doctor, for everything and every time. Ah, uh, my own question is like, you know, like uh, me, I'm a Muslim, but like every Monday and Thursdays, we usually fast. Like today now, I had my fast, but 
the my question is you told us now that we should be eating raw food but just what i what i took this morning before for my fasting right i took my bananas beetroot and the mix, mixed berries all the maybe blueberry blackberry everything together which is this i made it a smoothie which i took in the for my fast this morning but you know well is that that was after because i i was with the um tokumba for the exercise around the six o'clock okay i think i took the six hour uh, half six because our fasting is finished at half six which i take then we broke at five o'clock now mm -hmm. you said to be taking raw raw food but my i took um asparagus cauliflower peas broccoli carrot then a bit of olive oil meat Mm -hmm. But I cooked it a bit. I didn't take it raw. I cooked it. Is that okay? Because you said we should be taking it raw. I don't know. Maybe I can take cauliflower raw. I don't know. Okay. But that's what. I, that's what. But I cooked it a bit. Right. That's that is still very okay. What you have done is 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 in, is in order. Is in perfect I'm order. Not you just you just ensure that ensure that it is not overcooked. Right. Okay. Yeah ensure that it's not overcooked one of the things i always want to uh, advise people to do is to stir fry reduce the number of the number the length of time you, you put your vegetables on the stove and then take them out as much as soon as you can they really don't need all of that um you know intense eating and all of that you, they, they don't need it just like um, they just need something minimal to do. so what you have done or what you are doing is actually very very effective is something that uh, i would recommend for anyone to do it, it's, it's perfectly in order if you have it fast and then what you now do for the rest of the day is to use uh is to use uh, you could snack on so many other things right i don't see you going back to eat anything but i'm not saying you can't eat cooked meal right now like you started off you broke your fast with the things you did right so now Maybe in the next two hours, you still want to eat. <laughs> I don't see you eating anything cooked. If you do, I, I okay, let me tell you this. I remember that was the time we had a fast, about 40 days fast in our church. And then after the fast, almost everybody had dead weight. <laughs> and we were like, how? Oh, how do you add weight in the fast? It's because the nature of our because the nature of our work, our schedules, like by the time we, we have to meet and converge by 6 p.m. to pray and do all of that, we go back home, almost some of us are getting home by 8 o'clock. By 8 o'clock, you are breaking the fast. Whatever you are eating by 8 o'clock, by maybe by 9, you are laying your, your, your head to rest. You are, you are going to sleep. So that is just too close to bedtime. So that wasn't a very good, it wasn't good at all. People were just adding weight every, after fasting for 40 days. That people should be lean they are dead weight right so what you do it's good i don't see you having any cooked meal again for the rest of the day one other thing you could do is to do 50 50 50 percent raw food 50 percent cooked food and you have to be sincere to yourself that you do not allow the cooked meal to be more so for example what you had this evening right now you can cut it into three or into two sorry into two and then take a portion of it the remaining portion put it in your refrigerator till tomorrow and then if you have a cooked meal that you want to have you can have it also you can put your cooked meal into three portions that your normal portion of your cooked meal divide it into three places and take one third of it and go to, to, to bed for the night that would service you and help you it's going to help you to sleep properly and it will still give you energy to continue your fast if you have to fast the following day okay. thank you sir you are welcome all right thank you everybody uh, if there are other questions, please send to us through WhatsApp. We'll be willing and glad to uh, answer those questions. But please take this as very important. It's one of the most important uh, aspects of this lifestyle. Very important. The body can reverse any condition. This we discussed today is one of the critical factors to consider if we are working towards the body recovering from any condition. Let me also say that. Um, okay, so that'll be my final point in closing. <laughs> there are things called meal replacement. 
the nutrient shakes. Um, I recommend them a lot uh, because of what they do. I've also insisted that uh, it should be part of the products that we will be launching in the towards. I think maybe that will be next. I'm not sure it's going to be top for this month or for this class. I'm not sure. If it doesn't, you always find it there. The meal replacement, they contain sometimes about 82 nutrient factors. They are different from the protein shakes. The protein shake is what people who are into physical fitness who want to build muscle, that is what they feed on. That has just about six, sometimes eight nutrient factors. The meal replacement sometimes will take up to 82 nutrient factors. They contain superfoods, digestive enzymes, phytochemicals, phytonutrients are all packaged together into a powder form. I would recommend it. It does not matter what you think, how healthy you think you are eating. That is something you should have in your shelf. There are days that you want to go, you are going hungry, you don't have time to cook or to prepare your raw food or a healthy meal. All you need is to take a scoop and put in a glass and drink. It's enough for your nutrients that will last you between 7 to 10 hours of the day. I have it in the green form and in the red form for the product that we'll be releasing for, from uh, Intracetical Air Solution. It's called Nutramis. That's the brand that it's coming out from. It's so vital and important. There are times that people are even healed. They can't even, they can't take food. That we go. Just put it in a, in a glass of water and drink. It's healthy. It's important. It's going to help your body to be able to gather enough nutrients that is required. Because of farming processes, procedures, farming methods these days, a whole lot is going wrong with the food people ingest. I was discussing with a client two days ago, and to even recommend certain food becomes a problem. Right in Nigeria, we saw on TV where these Aousa boys who sell fruits, they would put the fruits in the, in the drainage, right? They soak it in the drainage, in drainage where people pee and all kind of stuff, and they break it out to rinse and they still sell to people. Now, you may, some people may buy, they say, ah, what did you eat? I, I took vegetables and then I have an infection. Oh, I'm eating healthy, yet I'm having an infection. What is the cause? The source, the process of that thing has issues. So sometimes it's the process of raising the food that denatures it or removes some nutrients from it. Sometimes it's the, it's the, it's the other kind of uh, climate change, climate activity going on that all of us are aware of that could be responsible. So a meal replacement becomes important because of the nutrient factors that it contains. I used to recommend O, Health and C or Garden of Life. Those two are, I recommend those two products a lot. Uh, o, Health and C and Garden of Life. They are two meal replacements that everybody should have. All right, everyone, thank you so much. We will meet 6 a.m. tomorrow, uh, whether you are in UK, or you are in, if you're in Nigeria, it's not 6 a.m., it's 7 a.m. If you're in UK and you are in the U.S., the Eastern uh, Standard Time Zone is 6 a.m. For those who are in uh, Canada, it's going to be 4 a.m. It's 4 a.m. It's 4 a.m. No, if you are in uh, <laughs> Western Canada, it's going to be like 4 a.m. Right. Some part of Canada is Eastern Standard Time as well. All right. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, the products are not yet out. They will soon be. They will be launched. We're launching them. It's going to be online. The order can be fulfilled and then they will be dropped, uh, delivered. Any part of the world is going to be delivered. So um, once we do the product launch, we're going to make you uh, give you full information about the products and how you can actually order them, get them to use. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time today. We thank you for coming. We'll see you tomorrow morning. 6 a.m., come with your guest. Tomorrow morning is Coach Tokum. No, no, no. Dr. Ajayi. Right. You don't want to miss Dr. Ajayi tomorrow morning. I will advise you, please, don't miss the Tai Chi. Um, <laughs> please, I, I always look forward to it. Why? I told you how it helps every organ of the body. That is one fitness routine that you do, that every organ of your body is uh is impacted positively all right then we we'll see you tomorrow thank you god bless good night thank you thank you all right guys i hope so we'll just finish the session i just let go the people on zoom
So if you are joining us tomorrow morning, it's going to be a good, a good time. You can, on this same channel on YouTube, we'll see you here tomorrow. We broadcast the fitness session tomorrow. And Dr. Ajayi is going to be in the house tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Uh, UK time, 7 a.m. Nigeria time, and then 6 a.m. EST. Thank you very much. God bless.